I went to bed thinking that it might be the coldest weather I've ever camped in, and then my heater died. Hey, good morning guys. So I got here about 10 o'clock last night up just south of basically Lake Tahoe. I'm here with Ed Shin, Mike with Flyfisher 530, and Greg with Trail Newbie. Greg and Mike actually a little earlier in the day went and found us a sweet spot here. And then Ed and I showed up pretty late last, uh, last night. But our game plan is we're gonna have some breakfast, get some coffee, we're gonna pack up. And Ed drove all the way down from Oregon, so we're gonna show him the eastern side of the Sierra, head Oh, this guy. Hey, what's, what's up, up buddy? We were just uh, talking about our game plan for the day. Oh, yeah, no, we're just going to probably try to get stuck in some snow. Oh, yeah. Maybe do some adventuring, you know? Ed finally came to the good side here and got a Jeep, so we figured we got to show him how to use it. Oh, yeah, you know, I want to get on those crazy trails that you guys all go on, so, yeah, I'm glad Kevin invited me out to this thing. Of course, yeah. man. Yeah, yeah thanks cheers, for coming, dude. dude. Appreciate it. Should be a great adventure. We're going to go to the east side of the Sierra, I think, this afternoon, and then uh, maybe head up towards Truckee on Sunday, but we'll see where the... See where the trail takes us. Let's so, do it, buddy. All right. And what PSI are you working? I'm going down to 25, and then if I need to go down further, I will. But yeah, really? I think that's a good safe spot right now. Yeah, this, this trail's kind of interesting because it's it's there's not a lot of boulders, just a lot of loose rocks. So really, it's at this point more of maybe a, a ride comfort more than anything. Um, yeah. But yeah, I'll see uh, see how it turns out. It's a beautiful day so far, and I'm excited to head out on the trail here. Uh, we are in Nevada, basically just on the eastern side of the Sierras. It's very different, stark contrast from where we were even an hour ago, you know, up in the, kind of with the Aspen, just south of Lake Tahoe, and now we're down here in the flats, but uh, beautiful nonetheless, and excited to get started. Yourself down. Why? Where? 
Well, I tell you what, um, I actually don't know if this video is going to upload before or after the video that I just took my wife in the same spot about a month ago, but nonetheless, uh, this is incredible. All the snow on the ground here, uh, you know, a month here is the difference between 70 degrees and basically feeling like late summer and uh, being in the middle of winter here. The temperature is right around, what guys, like the high 20s maybe, low 30s right now, and I think it's forecasted to get... Uh, like 10 degrees ish so that should be fun but uh, we're the only ones out here I mean this is this is why we do what we do so we can get to spots like this yep. hang out you know see everyone's gear chat and uh, just enjoy getting to places where most people either can't go or just aren't willing to go especially in the winter uh, this is Ed's first time out to this part of the country it sounds like what do you think so far it's great worth the drive worth the drive <sighs> Yeah. Uh, I forgot that I was fatigued last night. <laughs> <laughs> this guy drove like 12 hours. I mean, the rest of us, uh, Mike here is a little less, probably closer to what, three or so, or yeah. two or three hours. But um, yeah, this is great. We're, uh, we're stoked to be here. I think I might have one more buddy coming late tonight, which that drive might be interesting for him, but um, it's, it's all right. You gotta risk for the biscuit. But yeah, um, I think we're gonna get kind of our camp set up, or everyone, I guess, is set up but me. So we'll get the tent set up. Uh, we got a nice place for the fire going, and uh, we're just next to this this creek. It's gonna be it's gonna be phenomenal. All right, well, we're gonna break open the whiskey here and start getting our stuff set up. If you guys have been watching Ed's channel, so he effectively is kind of doing similar to what Greg uh, did with his vehicle, as you saw in uh, one of the kind of rig reviews we did with his, but uh, he's sleeping in the back, which is kind of interesting because you have a rooftop tent uh, on your truck. Yes. Uh, you've basically always had a rooftop tent. So uh, what made you want to switch to this? So this is going to be a, a rock crawling primary vehicle and then I can sleep out of. So because of that, I want to keep the center of gravity low not not putting too much weight up there i will have a roof rack but for recovery gear so my sleeping quarters i just wanted to keep it down low and be able to do that and i love it because it's so stealthy and it's just quick in quick out you know if i pull up to camp and it's raining and it's pouring out all i have to do is just jump into the back and just lay down yeah and, but yeah so that's how i configured it uh you know pretty soon we're looking at because i wanted to make this a rock crawling build it's going to be lifted higher we're going to have 39s on here you know, we're going to have the front and back bumpers doing all that stuff. So um, that the way I see it is this platform is going to be probably like this much higher. So I don't want it to, like I said, because of the height of it and I'm going to crawl with it, I don't want to add too much weight up top. My cooking gear and all that stuff up here, loaded it up and then, you know, little miscellaneous things. And I just leave the sleeping area just as is. All I have to do is just go into the sleeping bag and I'm ready to go. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, something certainly be said for just having your camp set up which I know Greg's been advocating since day one I love the tent traveling with family it's it's pretty much necessary and if Ed's gonna take you know his wife and kids out I'm sure he'd probably lean towards taking the truck but if you're going out by yourself bar none I mean Ed's set up here in like two minutes same thing with Greg and uh, mind you Mike has a little better tent than I do so he's set up in like five minutes for me I have to you know open the eye camper up still have to worry about inflating the mattresses it does get to be a lot so certainly something to consider it's a pros and cons like both of your tents I love your tents they're great tents the alley cab and eye camper they're awesome you know you can't beat them you know so for what you're doing and just camping up and sleeping in there can't get any better than that like I would not recommend this for anyone who's claustrophobic because <laughs> it is pretty tight in there I will admit that awesome yeah. cool thanks man all right yeah, dude. thanks
amazing how I fished a large part of this up in California area. It's more like plains though, isn't it? Kind of flat? Or? No, it's kind of where we came through where I told you those cabins were where people... Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Right got it. It's kind got of it, like that area. Okay. It's real big boulders on the river there and it's really hard to fish. It, you know, I mean, you got to jump around big boulders. There's brush everywhere along the river. Oh, there. yeah. All right guys, so we're just getting the fire going here. Enjoyed uh, the dinner that Ed made us, and then nice glass of whiskey that he brought as well. So he's uh, really coming through for us tonight, but breaking out the Fireside Outdoors fire pit. I did a video review on this probably year, year and a half ago or something like that. But for those who have been wondering, still served me very, very well. Uh, paired, pairing this with these, uh, this is fire plugs by uh, Bigfoot Bushcraft. They're basically little little pink things here and uh, essentially what you can do especially when wood is wet which this is dry thankfully because we all brought some but you can basically take these things you twist them up makes a nice little cotton ball that you can throw in there makes it very very easy to start so we have this beautiful river we've been talking about basically since we got here we're gonna build this fire up make it nice and warm and see how much we can minimize our suffering <laughs> That was a cold night. Uh, I've been having some heater buddy issues. So my first heater buddy, the little filament uh, that kind of glows once you get the pilot light going went out. That happened last or two nights ago. So yesterday I was up by Walmart and I bought this little guy. But unfortunately, that didn't work well either because um, I'm not using the propane bottles, right? Like the green propane bottles that you, the one pounders that it actually uses as kind of an inherent stand. Uh, I have it hooked to my propane tank down below, so I had to uh, jerry-rig it and tie it just to try to keep the angle right, and I, I couldn't get it. And after, you know, some few uh, few beers and whatnot, was not uh, really in the mood for messing around with it, so I ended up just hunkering down in my sleeping bag, but uh, it was rough. I think it probably got down to like six or seven degrees last night. Uh, this is the coldest I've ever camped. Um, man. <laughs> Beautiful spot, but that was, uh, yeah, I feel like I was in survival mode. So I can go climb down. It's so cold to be honest. I don't think we're even gonna make breakfast. So we're just gonna pack up here and, uh, and try to get going on the road and get going to our next campsite. So I'll talk to you soon. Whew, you guys can see just how cold it is here. Awning is just still totally frozen. Kind of sucks to put it away like this, but we do need to move on to another campsite. Uh, so I guess what I'll probably do is put it away and then similar with the eye camper, which is also frozen solid, uh, just, you know, open her back up, hopefully get some sun on it later in the afternoon and get all that ice melted off. My fingers weren't the only casualty of the cold. Mike's battery died on him overnight, so my buddy Scott had to give him a jump start before we could leave camp. So we were just leaving camp here, and we don't have to cross the river, but why wouldn't you? If, you know, given the opportunity. So uh, we're gonna cross right here. 
Uh, Mike was smart enough to put basically a hundred feet of uh, synthetic extra winch line that he had, or uh, extra synthetic winch line that he has rather. So uh, that way I can drag it across. And if for any reason I get stuck, uh, the line's already here. So all they have to do is hook it up to their winch and then just pull me straight backwards. You guys ready to get after it? Sweet. So we just got back to the trailhead. We didn't do a lot of filming because we are kind of a little behind timeline for where we wanted to be today. So um, we are all gonna get ourselves aired up here. My buddy Scott was uh, awesome enough to drive like five hours to come and hang out. He's gonna head back. Uh, and then I think the rest of us are gonna head up maybe towards the Truckee area. Uh, I think we're all a little over the 10 degree uh, weather, you know? So we'll see what we can find. Hopefully something on the west side of the Sears, which is a little bit cooler, but uh, yeah, other than that, beautiful down there. Uh, definitely a place where we not go alone uh, when it's that cold. You know, like Mike's a great example today with his battery dying. If he was by himself, his you know his backups to his backups failed. Uh, you're kind of hosed out there. So um, shameless plug there for especially if it's going to be cold or like somewhere where you know no one's going to be able to come and help you. Uh, make sure you are traveling with someone. As we headed up Highway 207 towards Lake Tahoe, the desert sage quickly gave way to pines. We decided to stop for lunch in Truckee at Greg's favorite spot. He was nice enough to buy us all lunch. Thanks, buddy. We quickly got back in our vehicles, grabbed some firewood, and hit the road into the Tahoe National Forest for another great night of snow camping. Mike was in the lead in our group and got stuck in a particularly wet and slushy part of the road. We quickly threw my traction boards underneath his tires, but it was really a half-hearted effort, and we really needed to dig his tires out from the snow uh, with the shovel to be effective. But Greg was right behind him with his winch, so just to keep things moving as the sun was setting, we hooked him up and pulled him backwards. Sometimes, fortunately, you got to change your plans. The spot that Mike had laid out for us uh, has not been tracked on yet, and it is just... Uh, a little too soft uh, and we don't want to be pulling ourselves out all night so we're gonna turn around here we got Ed and I turned around 
Greg here is crushing it. What we do, baby. And uh, now we just have Mike to do. We got back on the road and settled for a campsite around an old corral. I say settled sarcastically because the seemingly boring campsite at night yielded an incredible sunrise the following morning. Ed and I got to work clearing out the snow and we enjoyed yet another night of awesome camaraderie with a few dudes sitting around a campfire. We talked about everything from newborns to fatherhood and life experiences to our hopes and dreams. It was awesome. We are on night number three now. Mike's taking us to another one of his spots tonight. We're up in the, the Shasta National Forest. No, I'm sorry. We're in the uh, Tahoe National Forest. And uh, we tried to find some different campsites, some spots he's been to, but the snow is uh, really off the roads. It was really pretty high. And being the last night, we really weren't looking to get anything, anything uh, too crazy. So anyways, for now, it's about 8.30, and uh, we're going to all turn it in pretty early. Greg and Ed especially are wanting to leave right around sunrise and I'll probably try to leave soon thereafter as well. This has been a great trip. Uh, getting to meet uh, Ed and I have been talking for a couple years and he's been a huge inspiration for the channel so getting to finally meet him was really awesome. Hang out with Mike and Greg as always and then my buddy Scott uh, who uh, lives in my neighborhood actually is a big Jeep guy and he drove five hours just to be with us for the one night and then left with us in the morning uh, and drove five hours back so thanks dude for, for coming that was awesome. Uh, he actually forgot his sleeping bag which sucks. Uh, and he did have a Mr. Heater buddy, so he used that and he survived, but, uh, he was awesome and was like, Hey, I'm leaving. Uh, so you can, uh, borrow mine if you want. So that is what I'm doing. Uh, so thankfully tonight I have some nice warmth from Scott's Mr. Heater buddy. So thanks for that. Anyways, guys, I think I'm going to try to turn in here, get some sleep and, uh, see you all in the morning. Heading out. Campsite was over there. We're heading back into the meadow over here. Another uh, very cold and brisk morning for sure, but I had a heater this time, so uh, way better off than yesterday. All right, well, just stopped in Truckee real quick for a bite to eat with Mike. Uh, Ed had has like a nine hour drive ahead of him, so he left uh, right when we got off the trail and then Greg followed shortly behind. Uh, so we had a quick cup of coffee and some breakfast and just talked about the trip. Uh, and it was really nice. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this. This was a really great experience for me. We had great camaraderie amongst the four or five of us. Uh, really cool to sit around the campfire and talk with these guys. We all have different backgrounds, different stories, you know, and it's it's really fun just to just to share. And that's what's so cool about this community, you know, and being able to just sit around a campfire and just chat. Uh, so really enjoyed that aspect of it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Thanks for coming along. Thanks for sticking with me this far in the video. And I cannot wait to take you on the next snow camping adventure. I'm Kevin with Rhino Off Road, and we'll see you on the next one.